Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to start talking about Marshmallow. If you've followed my last course, you'll know that we used RecParse in order to parse the incoming arguments to our API. But RecParse is starting to become deprecated and now Flask RESTful is recommending that you use Marshmallow instead of RecParse to parse those incoming uh, that incoming data. So we're going to look at what Marshmallow does in this video and then over the next few videos in this section we are going to be adding Marshmallow to our API instead of RecPar. So we're going to do this in an incremental way just to simplify it a bit. So what is Marshmallow? Marshmallow is a library used for serialization and deserialization of data. So the first thing we have to do is look at what serialization is. So I'm going to call a, a file uh, here called serialization.py. That's correct, I think. I'm just going to create this and make sure that you have installed Marshmallow in your environment. So I'm going to open the pip file here and I've installed 3.0.0 B16. At the time of recording, Marshmallow is still in beta. Well, version 3 is still in beta. So if you just install Marshmallow, it's actually going to install version 2. And it's frankly not as good. Version 3 is much nicer to work with. So if you are uh, watching this and you install Marshmallow and that installs version 2, uninstall it and make sure to install 3.0.0 beta 16 or later. And the way you can do this is by opening your preferences or your settings in Windows and going over to your project, project interpreter, pressing the plus icon and finding here Marshmallow. So Marshmallow is up here. Notice that the current version is 2.15.6. But if you specify version, you can install a later one. I would recommend you go for the latest one available, which should be 3. Point something. Okay, and we are working with the beta version right now because version 3 is not out yet, but we're hoping that not much is going to change between the recordings and the time when the course comes out. But if it does, we'll of course be updating this uh, to make sure that we are uh, teaching the correct stuff, of course. Okay, now that Marshmallow is installed in your environment, and you can use pipenv or you can use virtualenv, it doesn't matter. Uh, whichever one you prefer to use, you can do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and import schema and fields. So we're going to start with this, and we're going to look at what Marshmallow does. And I think the best way to do that is with some code. So we're going to create a book schema. And a schema is a definition of something. Uh, so this is going to define what fields are in a book. And we're going to have title, which is going to be fields str for string, and author, which is going to be fields str for string as well. Now, our book schema must inherit from the Marshmallow schema class. And then all you have to do is define these two class variables, which are both strings. Once we've done this, we've essentially defined what a book, what the book data at least is. Now, if you have a book class and it has a normal init method and it takes in uh, a couple of properties, self title equal title, self author, there we go. We have something like this. Now we have two different things. One of them is a book class. This is what our program is going to work with. Let's imagine we have some sort of API or indeed any other program. And inside that program, out in, in completely uh, separate from what the user sees, we have books on a program talks between the different parts of itself using this book class. But then 
when we want to send the user some information, we only want to give them a title and the author. So we're going to skip giving them the description field. This is precisely what Marshmallow is for, or at least what the serialization part of Marshmallow is for, turning classes into dictionaries. So let's create a book, and I'm going to call it Clean Code by Bob Martin, and the description is going to be something like a book about writing cleaner code. Okay. Now we have our book object. If we print this book and we run serialization.py, you can see that what we get out is, you know, the usual wrapper method of the book, which just defines or tells you the class, tells you it's an object, and it gives you the memory address of it. Not terribly useful. But if we make a book schema and we do like that. Now we can use this schema to take the book and turn it into a dictionary. So the book dict is going to be book schema dot dump and it's going to dump this book object that we've created. Okay. Now if we run serialization.py again, you can see that we now get a dictionary and this dictionary has a title and an author, but it does not have a description. So what's happened here is we've taken the properties of our class and we've passed them through essentially this sort of sieve, this schema. And what this has done is it has taken the properties that match our book, title and author, and it has turned them into a dictionary where the values are strings and the keys are title and author. So again, looking back at it, you can see the title and the author are here as two keys and the values are the ones that were in our object. This is the whole serialization part of Marshmallow. It takes an object, no matter what it is, but it takes the object's properties and passes them through the schema and gives you a dictionary when you do a dump. So when you dump the class, it gives you back a dictionary with the fields defined in your schema. I imagine you can see how this could be useful for our API. We've got our model, we can pass it through a schema, and it gives us a dictionary. So we no longer need the JSON method that we were working with in the last course and in the last section, because the schema can take those properties and turn them into a dictionary for us without us having to define our own JSON method. So Marshmallow can do a lot more stuff, not only take properties and turn them into a dictionary, but it can do a lot of, you know, uh, changes and transformations during this process. Throughout the rest of the course, we're going to be looking at some of those things. But this is uh, what I wanted to cover in this video. I just wanted to show you how Marshmallow can be used to turn an object into a dictionary. In the next video, we're going to look at going the other way, getting a dictionary and turning it into an object. I'll see you there.